Hey guys, it's Candace from Beacon Hill Books. Um, I had already taped a January Highlights, but I just didn't like it because I couldn't put in the book pictures. It seemed really dry, so I'm going to re-tape it now. And yes, the lighting and this stuff is not good right now. Um, but I still want to put something up quick before it's basically almost halfway through February. Um, I'm going to try and make this quick. So, um, I read 15 books in January. Uh, three of them were graphic novels, which were all highlights um, for me. Five were historical fictions, two were historical mysteries, three were, uh, three were nonfiction. I read one classic and one historical romance. And... I will say the highlights of my month for me particularly were um, my buddy read with D for Catherine of Aragon by Alison Weir. Um, we we both really enjoyed that book, and it was fun to get to know more about one of the other queens um, besides Anne Boleyn of Henry VIII's wives. I've read a lot of Tudor books about all six wives, but nothing particularly just on her. And it really gave me a great insight into her personality and made me like her a lot more because I think in the other books, you know, Anne also has, gets a lot of the bad guy type, um, persona thrown at her but a lot of them also capture this like vivacious like flirtatious person that everyone wanted to be around and was so great and you know Catherine had this quiet like dignity about her where she was willing to persevere and still try and be a good person and um I really really enjoyed getting to know her better um the other great highlight I had um, was the graphic memoir, uh, The Best We Could Do. It's an illustrated memoir by Tai Bowie. And this is her story of becoming a mother, but also of her parents' journey. So it sort of flashes back in time to her parents in Southern Vietnam in, I think, the 1970s. Um, when the country is very war torn and war torn, and their um, the mother and father are separate stories, like really different. Like her mother was, came from more influence, but they still had very difficult stories um, when they met, and then they eventually immigrate to California. And um, she, the main character, is um, following. Her, her parents' story, but also her story as a, as a first parent, as being a parent for the first time and relating that to how her mother went through that in uh, the situation in South Vietnam. The illustrations, I thought, were completely wonderful and beautiful. They're all of this sort of, like, orangey, reddish wash. And I think I read that um, Bowie actually this wasn't her like day job for a while and so she um held off publishing the book until she had uh gotten to a point where she could draw well enough that she wanted to publish the actual graphic novel um this has been up for a bunch of awards and i think it totally deserves it i think um it's a great great read i got it on hoopla i i highly recommend it and um something that's completely different than something so serious as that is I did find uh, the Sarah Scribble, Scribbles graphic novels, which I just loved. They're just great, fun, laughing type um, graphic novels. If you just need a little cheer up, it's great. Um, but a book that was also a highlight for me this month that is similar to the best we could do was The Golden Age by Tamima and um, and that was our uh, Read Around the World book club pick. And this also had to do with uh, a war-torn country, um, Bangladesh, in the 1970s. 
In particular, we follow a single mother with a son and a daughter who are going through this war of independence. And um, I was just, I just thought the writing was just breathlessly beautiful. I loved the journey of the mother, um, you know, at first being so scared for her family, but she was willing to do anything for her family. And her kids are very progressive and how that inspires her to try and put herself out there a little bit more. Um, some of the, you know, some of the people didn't like it as much as I did. And I've heard other sides of the story saying that this is a very biased side of the story. Um, but I just fell in love. I, I would love to read, I think it's a part of a series and there's two other books. Um, so I highly recommend that book. Um, I read Metamorphosis for the first time by Franz Kafka. And as I said in my wrap up video, that was just very strange and unexpected and just makes me want to continue reading classics in such a funny, strange way. Um, and I came across a, um, a cozy mystery series that I found on NetGalley called Dr. Elizabeth Pym's um, Intermillennial uh, Sleuth. And she, it, it tells a story and perspective of one in present tense and one way back. So this one was, was in the Mayan times. Um, and I really liked it. I really enjoyed it. It was, you know, um, just one of those cozy historical mysteries that you just gobble, gobble up. So, yeah. Um, so that's my January highlights. Let me know if you have any thoughts of any of these books, if you've read them or anything similar to them. Do you have any other good um, cozy historical mysteries that you would suggest? Let me know uh, and I will talk to you soon.